so uh, i suppose uh, all the students would be uh, joining in uh, in next 2 uh, 3 minutes uh, because okay. uh, they are having their three uh, third lecture so uh, they'll be joining on this uh, particular zoom uh, webinar id within the next one or two minutes so uh, once we cross uh, the 100 mark so then i suppose i i'll start with the uh, introduction uh, to the session and uh, then uh, i'll uh, ask uh, harman to uh, introduce uh, you sir dr steve and uh, then we can start off with the session so i'll uh, we'll okay. just wait for another another uh, one or two minutes uh, while the okay. participants so we okay. have uh, already 40 students already who have joined so everybody is very excited for this session so they are very good and how long have we? How long do we have, uh, Dr. Rajesh? About an hour, is it? Yeah, right. Yes, sir. Okay, hour, so I'll, right. I'll talk for a while, and then I'll, yes, I'll, yes, uh, I'll allow some questions. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. So we have uh, around uh, fifty-four participants now. I can see the participants list. So we'll just wait for another thirty, forty seconds, or sixty seconds, or so. Uh, I suppose all the first-year students, uh, all the freshers. First, I have already joined the session and uh, third semester students will be coming in. So we are very privileged uh, uh, to have uh, a very special guest with us. I am uh, addressing all the students, uh, 60 students, those who have already joined in while we wait for another... Not at all. Uh, You're very welcome. I'm very grateful for you to, uh, to ask. Not a problem. I just hope that I get the thumbs up and not the thumbs down. <laughs> Surely, sir. <laughs> so we have reached uh, the 75 mark. Uh, next uh, 30 minutes, uh, 30 seconds, we'll uh, be reaching the 100. I'll be starting off with the session. I'll brief. Uh, the students, uh, what is the agenda for today's session? So we have 79 now. And the students are commerce students in the main? Yes, sir. Uh, so they will be a mix of students, uh, like uh, some students would be from MBA, uh, BBA, BCom, and some students will be from uh, BTEC and uh, MCA and okay. BCA. So they are actually. A uh, mix of all the courses. So we have around 80 students now, uh, another 20, and uh, I'll start up with the introduction part. Oh, good. 79. <laughs> So, Harman, I think uh, we can start. Uh, I think the mark yes, is sir. above yeah. 100. Yes, so yes, I yes think... sir. Oh. So, uh, hello, students. Uh, welcome again today. Uh, this uh, AIMTC webinar series that we are uh, conducting on the skill enhancement uh, lectures. And uh, today we have a very, very special guest with us, uh, joining us all the way from Australia. Uh, Dr. Steve McKinney from uh, Curtin University, Australia, and uh, 
welcome dr steve uh, welcome to punjab uh, we are Thank so pleased uh, to listen to global career and uh, on this topic so now i request uh, uh, harman to uh, introduce the uh, guest or the expert lecture to the uh, uh, audience so they, they can have a feel of the lecture like what so, are the uh, areas before before introducing uh, let me welcome on behalf of apj uh, apj institute of management and engineering technical campus uh, jalandhar sir uh we welcome at this platform and uh, we are really thankful ki you have accepted our uh, offer and you accepted our request and uh, you are here on a very apt topic and an intelligent global career uh my dear students when we were interacting with uh, dr steve uh before the start of the session he is having the wide uh, uh, coverage of uh, his visits uh, in india in majorly all the cities uh so uh, definitely with the rich experience of dr steve definitely we you are uh, going to be enlightened and you are able to know lot of uh, areas to be covered for the same so harman please introduce uh, dr stephen uh, uh, to all our attendees to all our students so that they can gain momentum during the webinar thank you so much sir a very warm welcome to all the attendees Uh, Dr Steve is an associate professor of management at Curtin Business School Curtin University Australia he has done his phd from university of warwick uk he is an experienced business professional consultant and now a senior academic at curtin business school perth western australia with an expert is in global people mobility and networks global human resource management talent management working practices careers and global leadership in addition he is having considerable experience working with small and medium sized business implementing value creating people management system he has worked in commerce as well as in academia in north america asia and europe his experience spans global corporate environments as well as entrepreneurial startups and small business development his research and consulting focuses on global hrm global talent management global mobility and networks developing global leaders career transitions and career sustainability as well as people management system for small and medium sized businesses he has worked in all these areas throughout asia north america and europe and he is involved in number of other projects as well he has also collaborated with researchers in uk brazil new zealand canada india and other parts of the world also he is also on the editorial board of personnel review critical perspectives on international business and journal of organizational effectiveness and has published over 50 articles and business chapters in journals like journal of business ethics british journal of management international journal of hrm etc he is also a member of australia india business council western australia management committee and he is also director at research consultancy no shops we welcome you sir and i hand over the stage to you now sir please proceed Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Harman, and thank you also, Dr. Uh, Rajesh, uh, for that uh, introduction. Um, and uh, thank you very much for those of you who are attending uh, this uh, webinar today. Um, uh, I'm very grateful that you've given up some of your time to uh, to listen to what I'm uh, going to talk about in terms of uh, uh, an intelligent uh, global career. As Dr. Rajesh uh, mentioned, um, I'm frequently in India. Uh, and have been really uh, on and off for about the last 30 years of my career so uh, i've traveled pretty much uh, throughout india from the from the south right through up uh, in and in, into the north and, and uh, when i do go to india the punjab is always a uh, uh, one of my favorite places uh, to to visit and i enjoy uh, coming uh, there and particularly also to jalanda uh, where i've been many times in the past so it's my great pleasure Uh, today to talk to you a little bit about an intelligent uh, global career uh one of the reasons that um i think uh, i'd like to talk to you about this is uh, uh one it's uh, i've had a global career um i uh, was born uh, in england in the uk so i'm an englishman by birth now obviously in australia but during the course of my um my career both in commerce and in the academic environment Uh, I've lived in the United States and in Canada, in New Zealand, uh, in Australia. I've lived in Germany and uh, the Netherlands. I've also lived uh, in Singapore for for uh, eight years. And in addition to that, in much of my commercial and academic life, I've had projects and visited many other uh, parts of the world where I still have many projects that are 
that are going on. So I've been lucky enough to have, uh, from a relatively young age, uh, a global career. Uh, and it was always, when I was young, my intention um, to, to have such a career. So I didn't really have a plan, uh, but I did have an idea that one of the things that I would want to do through uh, whatever kind of uh, life I had in terms of work, I always had the idea that I would spend some time, if not a lot of my time overseas. And although I'm English by birth, I haven't lived in England now for, for over 30 years. Uh, and I go back, uh, you know, I used to go back frequently, obviously with our pandemic situation, it's uh, very difficult. Um, for us at the moment to go anywhere. So I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about a global career. It's, all, it's something I've done, but it's also uh, an area of research uh, that I've been involved in uh, also for many years. So one of the things I want to start with is, um, is a number of assumptions um, that exist about achieving global career success in the 21st century. And one of the things I'll talk about as I go through the, the next few slides is how the idea of what a career is, uh, and a global career in particular, has changed very much over the last uh, 20, 30 years, uh, and certainly into the 21st century. So some of the things when you as young people uh, think about your career, one of the things that you might uh, assume is perhaps that you have to know what you want from your career at an early age and you have to stick to it. Now, when I'm usually in front of a, a group of, of young students and, uh, and others, and I ask that question, I ask them um, to say whether they think that uh, these comments are true or false. Is it true that you have to know what you want from your career at an early age and stick to it? Uh, or um, do we think that uh, it is likely that during the course of our career, we need to uh, move and change uh, and, and try new and other uh, opportunities and directions. Well, in general sense, uh, one of the things that uh, was certainly the case when I was probably your age is that uh, you, uh, you went to school, went to university, you came out from university, and there was an expectation that you would know what it is you wanted to do. And you would carry on doing that for the next 40 or 50 years before you uh, retired. Uh, and that certainly was the case, I think, uh, 40 or so years ago. The situation now in the global economy, and although you know, the COVID pandemic has affected a lot of things, we expect that in the future we'll move through this and, 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 and move into a, a different kind of uh, direction. But one of the things uh, that happens now, I think, is that young, smart people are likely not to stay with their choice of career at the beginning uh, and not move anywhere. I was adding up the other day how many jobs uh, I'd had uh, in my life, and I have had 14 different employers. Uh, now, I'm a lot older than you, but today, uh, the general consensus is that probably by the time somebody is in their mid to late 30s, they're going to have 14 to 18 different jobs during that period, different employers during that period, different positions and so on. So one of the things that we think uh, is happening uh, is that most young people now, when uh, you're in your early 20s and you move through your career, there's a very good chance that you might be moving from employer to employer and you might actually move, be moving from area to area. So you might uh, be, be an engineer, but then you might move into management. Uh, you might, in fact, as an engineer, very often move into marketing. Uh, and in a lot of engineering companies around the world, the people at the top of those companies uh, are actually engineers, although they don't do much engineering anymore in their career. So the first point is, as a young person, it's a good idea to think that you're likely, and it's important probably for you to think about how you can move in your career in order to ensure that you develop and consistently, constantly developing your skills. Secondly, your employer or your boss determines your career opportunities. In the relatively old days, that was probably more true than it might be now. You are, you are looking to your employer or your boss to structure your career, to give you a career plan, to have some direction for you up an organization. However, it's now uh, the case that 
people have to take control of their own careers. You have to, and we'll come back to this later, you have to shape the kind of career that you want. So in difficult times, and we're in a difficult time at the moment where we may uh, lose our job, uh, the position may become redundant, we need to ensure that we are in control of our career such that we can move uh, to another uh, location or another employer. And we can only do that if we have much more control over how we think about what our career is and how we need to develop it into the future. And I'll come back to those points later on because they're very important. The third point, career success is like a ladder. You start at the bottom and work your way up. Well, again, there is some of that that's still very relevant, but essentially uh, these days, people are looking to move not only up, but perhaps sometimes sideways or diagonally in order to develop new skills uh, and new competencies that they can use to enhance their career. So you should expect that during the course of your uh, career, you're going to move as many times sideways and diagonally as you might move actually up. Uh, and sometimes you move into different areas of a business, different functions of a business. You might be in HR, but you might uh, move into marketing later on and so on. So career success, success is not simply like a ladder. And when we look at um, the way people think about careers, there are two ways in which we need to think about it. One is there is something called objective career success. And that means that we earn more money, we get promotion, we have higher positions in an organization. They're objective measures of success. But there's also another part of a career which is very important, that's called subjective success. And what this means is, are we satisfied in the work that we do? Does it give us a sense of challenge? Does it give us a sense of purpose? And these are subjective measures of success and they're very, very important because over the long term, what you really want to be doing with the work that you do is something that you fundamentally enjoy, that's very important for you, that reflects your values, that reflects your concerns, your beliefs, and your ambitions. And this is what ultimately is going to give you much more happiness in the work that you do. So there are two types of success. And when you think about the careers that you pursue in the future, think, yes, you want to go into a job where you're going to get objective success, but at the same time, you have to see that there is a good fit, a fit between you and the organization. Do I fit this organization? Does that organization fit me? So that my working experience, my experience at work can be a much more positive one than simply just trying to get some satisfaction from these more tangible and objective measures of, of your career. The fourth point, successful careers are built on hard work alone. Well, you probably know already the answer to that. Yes, hard work is very important. Uh, there are no shortcuts to anywhere worth going. So hard work is important. But we also know that actually it's So I suppose uh, we are facing some, uh, yes, yes. How important they are. So okay. there was a, uh, yes, now it's your last three, four sentences. I think your audio was not audible. Uh, ah, okay. Uh, but right now it is absolutely all right. Are we okay? Shall I continue? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So here's a little uh, diagram here. I won't go into this in much detail, but uh, this is the, uh, the idea of a, an intelligent career, uh, which, and in order for us to have a successful career, there are three key elements. And I'm going to look at these three key elements in a number of different ways. And this is the first way. One of the things that uh, is important when we develop our career and when we choose the first stage of our career is to know why it is we are going to be doing what it is we are doing. In other words, we have to have a sense of purpose. And that goes back to my point earlier, which is what kind of values do I have? What kind of organization do I want to work in? What kind of work do I want to do? What kind of working experience do I want to have? So we ask ourselves, uh, do I know why it is that I really want to do what it is I want to do? And that's beyond just the fact that you might, at this stage, want to make a lot of money. 
Uh, so you have to have a sense of purpose. So for example, here in Australia, and uh, probably also in India, people make a choice about the kind of organization they want to work in. For example, some people have a huge commitment to work in organizations that are not-for-profit organizations. Um, and they do that because they have a big commitment to um, certain kinds of, um, of, of social commitments. For example, it might be in things like aged care or uh, animal welfare and so on. So people might build a career because they have this huge sense of purpose in relation to that kind of organization. If we go to the bottom right, we have to know how. What, is, what skills, expertise, and knowledge do we need to have and develop in order to be successful in our careers? Now, one of the things that we know is very important at the moment is that the world of work is changing, and not only because of the COVID-19 pandemic. We know that the influence of artificial intelligence of machine learning, of robotics on the future of work is huge. And so what we need to have a good understanding of, particularly young people like yourselves, is what kind of skills and expertise do I need now? And how is that going to change in the future? Because uh, the general argument is that when you first go to university uh, and, and your uh, institute to study, jobs that existed then may not exist, uh, three or four years later when you finish your degree and jobs that didn't exist when you started your degree uh, will actually exist in three or four years time. So the future of work and the kind of work that's going to be available is changing rapidly. Partly, of course, that's because of the influence of technology, of robotics, artificial intelligence, machine learning. All of these things have a huge impact on the jobs uh, that will be done. But the important thing to remember is that it's not only that technology may take or change jobs, uh, take them away, but it creates new jobs. So for a young person building a career, you have to have an understanding of what jobs are being created and am I prepared for those jobs uh, when they arrive and when they um, are opportunities for me. And finally, on the bottom left here, knowing Hume. Who is it we need to know? We have, what networks do we need to build? What relationships do we need to build and with whom? One of the things I usually say to classrooms of, of students and MBA students and so on is that if you look around when you're in a class or even in a virtual environment like this, uh, everybody in that room or in that uh, uh, environment or certainly in your institute at APJ, everybody that you study with should be, by the time you finish, part of your network. Uh, because you will never know in the future when it might be that you will call that person up uh, and you're seeking their advice or their help in the future. So you start to build those networks uh, when you are at college, when you're at uh, APJ, when you are studying, because these people, most of whom are going to be other commerce students and so on like yourself. So you're probably going to end up in broadly connected careers and these people are going to be very, very important for you to stay in touch with in the future. So build your networks, not just your friends on Facebook and so on, but you need to build more professional uh, networks and relationships. As well as the knowing why, how, and, uh, and whom, you also might need to think about things like knowing when. If you, you may have an entrepreneurial idea, when do you start up your own business? You may want to go through some sort of career transition later on in your life. And when do I change direction? When do I move in a different direction? When do I move from marketing uh, into, uh, into human resources management or into customer uh, service and so on? And you also, of course, need to make decisions. Many of you, all of you, of course, have already made one decision, which is where are you going to go to university and college? Where are you going to work and live? Are you mobile or not? Uh, are you going to spend the entire of your life in, in Jalandhar or in the Punjab? Or are you going to be moving to another part of India or another part of the world? And where should I make the connections? Who, where should I make these connections that are going to be helpful for me uh, in developing my career? And these are all questions that you should always be asking yourself as you go through uh, your career. Now, a successful career and a successful global career, to put it another way, has three elements that uh, you need to think about. Let's start in the middle here, which is human capital. 
Now, human capital is essentially the skills that you own. So your bachelor's degree, your MBA, any other kind of courses that you may have done online or anywhere else, this is your skill set. This is your human capital, and you own it. Uh, you own it because you have acquired it as an individual person. So what you need to do in the future, like any other kind of capital, like financial capital, you invest it and you invest in it sensibly and you hope that that's going to uh, grow as you uh, move forward in your life. The same with human capital. If we are aware of how the workforce is changing, how work is changing, you need to invest in making sure that you have the skills in the future that are not only going to keep you employable, but more importantly, going to help you build a successful career. So you've always got to look for opportunities to develop your skills, but you should do that in a strategic way. Uh, a lot of my, uh, I have a lot of uh, young and other uh, connections from India uh, on LinkedIn. And what I see recently is a lot of young people in India are, are doing courses. They're doing online courses from all over the world. And that in itself is excellent. But what I would say is be strategic about it. Are those skills, how, how important are those skills going to be in the future for you? And do they help you learn and acquire the skills that are going to make sure that in the future you're going to have a sustainable and a successful career? Very important. So invest in your human capital, but make sure you invest in it sensibly and strategically. Uh, the point at the bottom, social capital, is of course, again, our networks. We have to invest also in building our networks, right? And professional networks are very different from Facebook type networks. You know, so the kind of network that you may develop through, for example, LinkedIn, is a very important professional network. Anytime, and I hope that many of you in the room already have your LinkedIn, um, your LinkedIn profile because it's very important because through LinkedIn, you can connect with all kinds of people all over the world, of course, not just in India, uh, which is also going to be very helpful for you. But when you do that, and when you set up your LinkedIn website, uh, and when you make a connection with somebody, always make sure you send a little note. Instead of just pressing that button that says connect, it's always nice for somebody to receive a little explanation as to why a person is actually connecting with them. So it might be, again, if you have an interest in marketing, there might be somebody on LinkedIn you see as a senior marketing executive, could be in India or somewhere else. Uh, when you contact them, tell them who you are. Tell them why you're contacting them. Uh, and in many cases, it, it's probably because you want perhaps them to give you a little bit of advice about how to develop a, a really successful career in an aspect of business that you're interested in. So develop your social capital, but the same the same uh, point here is as for human capital, which is do it strategically, all right? Do it, don't just connect with everybody because it's not about volume or quantity of connections on LinkedIn, it's about quality. It's about uh, having a relationship online or in the virtual world, which is going to be as helpful for you in developing your career as if you were face-to-face -face, uh, with that person. And thirdly, psychological capital. You've got to develop things like your resilience. You've got to be optimistic and hopeful. Nobody really likes to work with people who are pessimistic uh, uh, and not very hopeful because these people suck our energy from us. So we need to be able, and, and for all of us now, this is a very difficult period. We've got the COVID-19 pandemic. It's been a shock for many of us. This is where we develop our resilience uh, and we retain our optimism. It is very important. And what you will learn as young people, I think, by going through this particular situation uh, is a lot of the capability to face more difficult situations in the future, which you will face as you go through your career. So you've got to also work on your psychological strength uh, to be able to deal with difficult situations such as we have now uh, and to keep uh, moving forward uh, so that you can develop your successful uh, career. Now, another uh, overall, what we're saying here, what I'm saying to you is as a young person now, and you don't have to be young to be doing this, but what everybody should be engaging in is something called career shaping or career crafting. You have to be able to look at the world out there 
And you have to, as a young person who wants to be successful, not say, I just need a job. You need to look at what kind of position, what kind of organization do you want to work for? What kind of work do you want to do? How is the future of work changing? What do I need to know about the impact of technology? And how is that going to change work in the future so that I can prepare myself for it? Uh, for it? Do I know enough about analytics? Do I know enough about artificial intelligence? And if I need them, and if I acquire those kinds of skills, what can I do with them? The important thing in business is not so much that you need to be a technologist, but you need to be somebody who understands the impact of technology so that you can make better managerial and executive decisions. And that's the kind of young person probably that you want to be, the kind of person you want to be in the future. Somebody who understands the impact of technology so that when you are in senior decision-making positions, you are able to make good decisions because you have a good understanding of how work is changing, the impact of technology and so on. You have to focus on what and how you need to develop. It's very important. So as I've just said, with respect to human capital and so on, the important thing is to make sure that you focus on what it is you're going to need in the future so that you can be prepared always. You can predict almost what it is you need to be successful in the future. It's no good just having the skill set for the present. You need to anticipate the skill set that you need for the future. And for a person, a young person, wanting to build a business career, this has got to be something that you are constantly thinking about when you craft your career. One of the pieces of advice that I always give uh, young people is always look for new opportunities. Always be restless. Always be thinking that there's something out there that is better that I can do uh, well. So look for new opportunities. It doesn't mean you have to take them when they come along, but have a look, see what's out there, take a look around. Always be looking for the possibility uh, of improvement. And finally, when I talk to a lot of young students, they come to me sometimes and they say, there's this job that I've seen, I'm really interested in it, but I didn't apply for it because I don't think I've got everything that they've listed in that particular website or whatever it is. And my response to them always is, it doesn't matter. You're never gonna have everything you need to do the job in the way that it's described. But if you can do some of those things, go for it. Always go for it. Take the risks. Because a lot of things that you need to do when you're working in an organization, you can actually learn when you're in the organization, right? So never be afraid, particularly when you're in your 20s and 30s, never be afraid to take risks uh, because um, you're going to be young enough, if it doesn't come off, to start again, take more risks in the future. Uh, but if you don't take those risks uh, and those opportunities, there's always a danger in the future that you're going to be looking at yourself and saying, oh, I wish I'd have taken that opportunity when I was 28. And you might be saying that, you know, when you're my age, like 62, right? And that's, then you think, mm, that might be a bit too late. Okay, so I've got uh, two or three more slides. I'm going to go back to that uh, point I made earlier on, which is about the importance of social networking. So this, is, uh, this data here is about four years old, but we're updating it regularly. And I haven't put the new information on here, but we're involved or I'm involved in a research project which is looking at the uh, way in which social networking sites are important in the context of um, building your career. So when we look, for example, at LinkedIn, we find internationally that uh, a large portion of companies do their recruiting on the web. They do their recruiting through LinkedIn. This is very important. So this is why it's important for you to actually put together a very good uh, LinkedIn profile, right? Uh, because um, this is where a lot of companies may now be looking to find staff. And the reason they do that, of course, is because it's cheap, it's inexpensive. It doesn't cost them anything. Um, and there are a lot of really interesting uh, positions and interesting people, of course, who are on LinkedIn. Facebook and Twitter are also used by organizations uh, to recruit on the web. But the important thing about Facebook is that 
uh, generally, uh, people who recruit on Facebook tend to recruit in their very close network. If you, uh, when you're looking for professional opportunities, uh, LinkedIn, of course, is the website uh, to use. And you also have to be very careful as to how you use social media. Uh, I do a lot of um, work with um, managers. And one of the things I ask um, them to do um, at the beginning of a session on their laptops uh, is to Google their name and to see what comes up, to see what comes up. Uh, and the reason I do that, first of all, is because the majority of recruiters will do that. So when you get into particularly managerial roles, but not only managerial roles, a company is likely to Google your name to see what comes up. And uh, you can understand why that is, because one of the most important things for any business is its reputation. Uh, and uh, if things appear when your name has been Googled, uh, which give the impression that you may not be somebody who can uphold uh, the reputation of an organization, then of course uh, that company is going to want to know about it. So what we do every two years is we survey 1500 recruiters, again around the world, and one of the things we find is that what they do is they recruit, uh, they react negatively to profanity, any indication of swearing and so on. Uh, this second figure has gone up. They react negatively to the perception of alcohol use uh, in any pictures that may be um, a person may have posted in their um, LinkedIn, but more importantly on things like their Facebook and Instagram and so on. And they also react negatively to punctuation errors in the English language. So, um, you know, failing to, um, you know, typos, uh, typographical errors, misspellings and so on, they will not look at those things very favorably. So the important point of this research here is that from your point of view, many of you I'm sure who are listening to this will have uh, Facebook and so on accounts. Um, and uh, hopefully some of you will have LinkedIn but the point is be very, very careful what it is that you post uh, on these websites. Uh, and I'm sure that's as important in India as it is elsewhere. But certainly if you want in the future to develop a global career with a global business, it's going to be absolutely crucial that those things that, uh, that you post uh, are not going to um, uh, bring any kind of a, a shame on you. The important thing to remember is that once you've put something out there into the virtual world, uh, it's always there. You're never going to be able to get that back. And even if you change your and modify your content and privacy settings, often um, a, a person uh, can access that. And I've worked with companies, one here in Australia, one in Canada, uh, who hire people to actually get behind uh, what it is that somebody has posted. So it's always possible for somebody who knows what to do to get access to things that uh, you may not want them to see. So the point is here, from a career perspective, just be very careful uh, about the kinds of things that you put online. All right, so overall, in terms of a global career, here are some of the things I think that is going to be important for you to uh, think about. One of the things we know from all the research is that a successful global career is related to somebody who has had international education experience. Right? So any period of time that you have spent overseas in education is going to be favorable uh, in relation to developing a global career. And that is uh, obvious. If you've moved overseas to do some or all of your education, it obviously enables you uh, a little bit uh, more easily um, to begin to acquire um, a, um, uh, a position in that country. Related to that is the third point. If you want an international global career, uh, a successful global career, try to find uh, work for a global business. In other words, it doesn't matter whether that business is Indian or Australian or American or, or German. If it's a global business, you are going to have more opportunities uh, to work and develop a global career. Uh, and that's uh, essentially what I did. Right at the very beginning of my career, when I was in commerce, I worked in telecommunications. I was based in the UK, but I got to uh, work for a, um, uh, a Canadian 
telecommunications company. Uh, and that started my global career because with them, not only did I go to North America, but I also ended up having postings and assignments primarily all over uh, Asia, uh, Asia Pacific region and so on, Southeast Asia, Hong Kong uh, and so on. So working for a global business uh, is a very important way also, of course, of developing a global career. In addition to that, just make many contacts around the world. That's where LinkedIn is really important. Keep making those contacts uh, around the world, develop those contacts. A global career is also going to be related to your ability to understand technology and how it affects work. Uh, I'm sure you all know that and how important that is, uh, but um, it's very important that you understand the impact of technology. You don't necessarily need to be a technologist, but you need to understand its impact. Be aware of the impact of emerging technologies. I've just mentioned that. Always be thinking of new skills to develop and learn in relation to the way the future of work is going. Uh, so what I'm doing there is repeating my earlier point, which is be strategic about how you develop your skills uh, in relation to where the world of work and opportunities seems to be moving. Be positive, be positive, try to be positive as often as you can. Take chances and opportunities. Never think something is too difficult or beyond your capabilities because smart young people learn quickly uh, and, uh, and you need to be confident about your ability to learn and succeed. Develop your understanding of other cultures and how to behave and work in them. This is very important in the global uh, environment. Uh, as we move out of COVID-19, we have to work with people from other cultures, not only, of course, virtually, but increasingly, again, we'll move back to face-to-face. -to -face. So we have to be able to work with people who are different and diversity. And we also have to develop all of those good old professional skills. Communication, be a good team player, be a good problem solver, and particularly be a creative uh, thinker. So these, there are both, uh, there are some technical skills there and some professional skills. Uh, but all of the time, keep thinking about what is it I want to do? What is my purpose? Why, what is it I want to do and why? And then you need to shape and craft your career to try to achieve uh, those goals, right? It can be hard work, uh, but it's also very exciting work because you can be in control of your future uh, and your work and your life. Uh, and, and it's much better for you to be in control of that and to have somebody uh, control it for you. And thank you very much. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Was you that okay? Could you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. Uh, and uh, in a brief uh, period of around 40 minutes, uh, you have uh, raised number of questions in front of students. So definitely, uh, it is a basically one kind of self-appraisal and definitely uh, once we are in a position to go for our self-appraisal means how uh, we can work upon all these areas, definitely we will be having a successful uh, global career. Uh, so but definitely, sir, uh, very thought uh, thoughtful ideas being given by you. We are really uh, glad and uh, uh, really delighted to have all this. Uh, so now I think, Kamal, you can go ahead with in case certain questions uh, are available from our uh, attendees? Yes, sir. Sir, there is a question like uh, uh, how to balance your career uh, with your family? Like a uh, student is asking like uh, what is important, uh, money or family time? Because you have to compromise. So, uh, I think Dr. Steve uh, mentioned in the beginning uh, ki, uh, some organizations are for non-profit and something means how to maintain balance and sometimes we are having our moral responsibility towards society, uh, towards family, definitely. Uh, so Dr. Steve, uh, question is handed over to you. Uh, okay, that's, uh, well, you know, people have to organize as far as they can themselves, their balance. But um, what's interesting, I'm doing some uh, work at the moment. Um, uh, this was before the pandemic with some of my collaborators uh, in India. And we did some work on the um, uh, work-life balance attitudes of frontline uh, workers in hospitality, luxury hotels. Uh, and so uh, that 
research project, which is on hold at the moment until we get, obviously, hospitality has been affected very badly. But um, you know, the, what was interesting is that for um, many of the participants, uh, the way they saw work-life balance uh, in an Indian context was very different uh, from the way people looked at some elements of work-life balance, uh, for example, here in Australia. Um, so uh, we found that they were, um, obviously there were issues of, um, to be uh, their main problem uh, was essentially that uh, managers tended not to understand the importance of work-life balance uh, in, in producing a workforce that was much more um, prepared to be committed to the organization. Uh, so one of the things I think that's very important is um, to, first of all, uh, in an, organi an organization uh, has to have a good understanding of what it is that people in their organization want in terms of work-life balance. Uh, and um, to ask their employees, um, you know, how can we manage work-life balance uh, better? Um, because the evidence, the research is very clear that um, a degree of work-life balance enhances the what's called the employee experience. And one of the things that in HR, human resources management at the moment, that's very important is we treat employees similar to customers. Now, you know, there's the customer experience. We need to make the customer feel that their experience of buying products from our organization and so on is a very pleasant experience. And it's the same thing for employees. They need to think or they need to know that their experience at work is a positive experience. You know, that they, that the, the work environment is good. The people they work with, they have good relationships with and the work itself uh, is work that is, um, that is challenging, but also is manageable. So work-life balance helps us to enhance the employee experience. Uh, and over a period of time, certainly if you want to keep talented people, uh, you need to offer them uh, opportunities for uh, good work-life balance because talented people, it's one of the things that if they don't get that, uh, they are likely to move somewhere where that's gonna be better for them to have that, that balance. Sure, sir. Sir, next question is uh, by Mr. Rahul Anda. Uh, should we be cautious about our digital footprint? Uh, what is your take on this? Sir? Yes. Uh, and if this means, um, uh, if I take it to mean simply um, what is out there about us in the virtual world, uh, then, yeah, as I've said, we absolutely have to be very, very careful what it is we put out there in the digital world and it's particularly uh, on things like Instagram and uh, Facebook uh, and those kinds of things we have to be very careful uh, you know in, in, a, in a broad sense um, use Facebook much less than you would actually update your LinkedIn profile I know young people won't do that but you just got to be very very careful um, of, of what you put out there in the digital world. Sir, uh, you ap aptly right, uh, rightly pointed out uh, there is no shortcut to the hard work. Uh, hard work is only the key for the professional life. Uh, so definitely uh, that is absolutely true. And further, uh, you are emphasizing uh, majorly on up upskilling the LinkedIn profile. And uh, we are happy to share means for our, all of our students, we have already conducted two workshops means how to enrich your CV or how to enrich uh, your LinkedIn profile. So that will be the key definitely and uh, uh, keep your personal life uh, aside. So uh, majorly across the globe, majorly recruiters, they are going by your social profile, the social media profile. And uh, definitely you are in a position to enrich your social profile. Definitely you will be having the ample chances of uh, uh, showing your worth your competency, your skill set, and definitely you will be hired by appropriate uh, good MNCs. So rightly pointed out, sir, and you highlighted very well. Thank you so much. Uh, so, Kamal, please go ahead. 
the next question is uh, like a successful career depends upon hard work or smart work this is the question by tendi mm. uh well um uh we always uh, it's important for us to feel that we are working hard psychologically but um working hard at something that doesn't create value either for ourselves or for an organization is just wasted energy so particularly if we're talking about you know uh, well educated professional people um professional well educated people want to know that the job they're doing is job that is creating value for an organization uh that is making a contribution to their organization's mission purpose and so on and professional and well educated people know of course when the work that they're doing is just work for the sake of it uh and all that does is demoralize demotivate dissatisfy smart people uh so it is important for organizations and individuals to ensure that the work that they're doing is work that creates value that is worthwhile uh, for an organization that makes a contribution in some significant way right because one of the things i think that uh, you perhaps as well as me hear often i do certainly when i'm talking to people in organizations is um the reason that they get demoralized and dissatisfied and l- less commitment is not only because sometimes it's bad managers but also because the work that they're doing is just fundamentally boring and they see no value in it whatsoever and this is what uh, so the switch you know turns off here and they just come in and they carry on like a robot and uh, do whatever they need to do then when they leave the organization they switch that back on again and they suddenly become you know huge smart creative individuals uh you know playing the guitar and uh, whatever it is you know all of that talent and energy uh doesn't operate so organizations have to ensure that they understand what people's strengths are and they have to create and design work in that organization which is going to leverage those strengths because it's when we are doing things in which we are strong that we get a great deal of satisfaction uh, from the work that we do All right so if organizations can leverage people's strengths and talents not just a talents then uh we can actually move to smart work because we are designing work that is smart in relation to the strengths that people have rather of course than giving them things to do uh which may take a long time to do but clearly um uh, could be pointless so it's all about the design of work and understanding the value uh that is in the work that a person does you know so one of the things i talk to managers about often is ask yourself this question what is the value to this organization in the work that i do and if i was to take you out of this organization tomorrow would anybody notice uh would anybody care uh and um more often than not i'm afraid it's well not really you know um and that indicates to me that um there are too many people doing too much work that doesn't need to be done and all of that energy and creativity could be put into places where some real value could be created and that benefits an organization of course it also benefits an individual um you know because they're realizing their their potential absolutely i said absolutely as uh, uh, i think one more question is uh, it is available in q and a by one of our student uh, sir as you mentioned a tip that for a successful global career uh, you need to have international education uh, how can students not having an international education build up their global career uh, so okay. uh, question seems yep. to be interested uh, and uh, before handing over to dr steve uh, so karman uh, nowadays it is a global village and definitely 
by having lot of ways and means we can uh, go for the global education uh, by the online criteria all big b schools and all that uh, they are having a um, uh, number of uh, certifications uh, at a very reasonable rates very reasonable uh, nominal values and once uh, and i think aptly uh, sir has stated uh, you are supposed to develop your social contacts uh, social connections uh, through the linkedin profile and once we are able to develop uh, definitely it will take uh, some sort of time maybe one year maybe two years or over a period of two to three years you are in a position to develop your uh, social network and once you are in a position to develop your social network definitely uh, you can have uh, or you can go for the global career uh, so this is one my take sir by your take on this no i uh, i absolutely agree with you dr rajesh i think the three points you've made there are are excellent points first as you've said you know international education is available to everybody now uh online um so i know that many um students all over the world but particularly in india are gaining certificates from various universities in in the united states as well as india and and other parts of the world so that's fantastic because that is engaging them with international education so that's absolutely the first thing secondly as you said social networks use linkedin to connect with people internationally and stay connected to them don't just make a connection and forget about it you know that's the purpose of linkedin is to networks have to be social capital they have to be constantly yes. worked to improve so you've got to uh, build those networks all the time and maintain connections uh, those two things uh, absolutely and the third thing is um and not everybody can uh, do that but uh, try to find organizations that <clears throat> operate um uh, outside of india in first of all in other parts of india uh other parts of asia and so on if you can get uh, because international regional companies um will often uh, have opportunities for young people to move and be mobile and in my experience and it's still the case i think now most people don't want to be mobile uh, a lot of people want to stay where they are most people stay where they are so to get people volunteering for sometimes opportunities outside of their home country can actually be more difficult than it appears because when it comes to the point sometimes where people have an opportunity to move they often say oh no no i uh, i'm not ready all my family are here and these are all good reasons for staying uh but for uh, it means that for those uh, young people who may really be wanting to be mobile um always look for the opportunities so absolutely dr rajesh i agree with you international education get that stuff online build up a good picture but try and do it strategically build those international networks through linkedin and all other kinds of ways uh, and uh, and try to uh, find a way um into an international company and the other thing to remember is a career is not a sprint it's a marathon right this point sir and every every social contact building uh, uh definitely it requires time it requires your energy it requires your labor so definitely and uh, uh, you rightly pointed out uh, it is not ki you are just connecting and later on you are forgetting about the same connect uh, but you are supposed to nurture the same connect uh, and definitely over the years you are able to nurture it and you are able to get good results uh, over all those contacts Uh, so uh, uh, i think sir one more question it is coming so the webinar is going interesting so lot of questions they are coming out uh, one of the question is which is the most important quality uh, that requires for creative business uh, so uh, i am just adding uh, one or two points into this i think the question is uh, by mr amit uh, so i think uh, dr steve rightly mentioned in one of his slides Uh, uh when when you are doing your degree if that may be for two years or three years or in case of a btech if it is for a uh, three years uh, during that period uh, you are supposed to forecast what kind of jobs will be available after two years or three years or four years similarly on the same pattern you can think upon in case the job creation is with regard to such sector or the such market so it means this such kind of businesses that can um, take a lead uh, in the days to come so accordingly you are in a position to go for your creativity and you can find out uh, your way uh, so sir your take on this please yes uh, the question i think was um 
Uh, the simple answer is creative what businesses. What is the most need... important quality that requires for a, a creative business? So this was okay. a question basically. If it means just a business, any kind of business that's creative, the most important thing that they need is creative people. And uh, right. and that's where, of course, the, 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 there is a crucial role for uh, our profession, for higher education, because we are the people who must uh, add to and develop that ability to think creatively. And that's everything from the way we teach young undergraduates, particularly in business schools, uh, to uh, what it is we teach them and, and how we get them to think uh, about the way the world is. So we have to build it into, you know, to use a, uh, the word pedagogy, we have to build it into our teaching. How is our teaching creative? such that we produce young students who come out with creative thoughts. And one of the things from my point of view uh, now, and certainly here amongst my colleagues, uh, academics and professors here who teach tend to see themselves now as curators. We curate knowledge. We bring things together uh, and help to guide those students because there's so much knowledge and so much um, uh, fake knowledge out there. You know, we have to, uh, that students can get a lot of stuff without uh, coming to me and asking me. So we need to curate uh, an appropriate learning uh, arrangement for them. Uh, but most importantly in all of that, I think, is you know, we, have to, uh, we have to promote the idea that students should challenge everything. They should challenge everything. Uh, and we need to open up their minds to the fact that, um, you know, the textbook, if that's what they use, I don't use textbooks. Uh, you know, I have a barrier in front of me. Uh, but, uh, you know, that um, that is just a one person's opinion of the world. Some of it, a lot of it may be by research. But the most important thing is, you know, to be creative, you need to be challenging always the status quo. And, uh, and that, I think, is, is the key issue in a, in a creative business. You know, creative businesses challenge the way things are done and the way things have been done. And they can only do that if they've got creative young people. And I find in the world now that uh, young people are a lot more creative than we give them credit for. Definitely. So, absolutely. yeah, I'm not sure absolutely. that's a good answer to that question. But anyway. No, 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 no. it's absolutely, <laughs> absolutely true, so, yes. Very right. Uh, so, uh, Kamal, any other questions? Dr. Steve, is it all right or whether you are occupied somewhere or uh, we can take one or two minutes? Fine, I'm so fine. I think, I've, got, I've got some time here for sure. So, I think we can have uh, one more question. Uh, it is asked by a student, what is more important, uh, communication skills or technical skills in order to get a good job? Uh, both. Um, it depends really. I mean, communication is one, uh, people sometimes call all of those skills, you know, communication, uh, team working as a, they call them soft skills, but of course they're not soft skills. They're professional skills. And most importantly, they are creative skills. Uh, so if we were talking about being creative, the ability to communicate and influence through communication is a creative skill. Um, where you've got to persuade people about your ideas and you're collaborating with people when you've, and so on. So those skills are, are really important. An engineer, for example, the world's best engineer, if they are unable to communicate, might as well be the world's worst engineer. Uh, you have to be able to communicate, um, whether you're, you know, an accountant or an engineer or, or whatever. And, uh, and so they're, both very important. Um, you know, technical skills are important, but don't forget to be uh, to be in leadership, executives, managers. You don't necessarily have to be a software engineer or an expert in artificial intelligence or machine learning. You simply have to understand it enough to help you to make informed decisions about how you use technology and how it's going to add value to your business. And that's really very important, I think, to remember. We mustn't, young people mustn't get off on the idea that they have to all become data analysts or 
experts in creating artificial intelligence or robots uh, because we can't. I couldn't uh, and I can't. So, you know, we need to understand things uh, to help make us better decisions. Um, so not all of the time do we have to develop hard technical skills, uh, but we have to uh, understand the world. I remember, if I can tell a little story, when I was back in telecommunications, right at the beginning of my career, I, I used to, I was in customer service. I was European director for customer service. And I used to see the customers a lot um, to talk to them about uh, telecommunications, technology, telephone systems. And basically, most of our customers just wanted to know, how could I make an external call? How could I make an internal call? And how could I leave a message? Uh, and then I went to Bell Canada, who was the engineering part of my organization. And the engineers had these telephone systems, and they had everything you can imagine on them. They had buttons for this and things for that and all the rest of it. And they used to say, let me get out and see the customer so that I can sell all of these bells and whistles. And I never used to take an engineer with me to visit a customer. Because if there was one person who was going to lose a sale for me, it's going to be an engineer. Because by the time the engineer had finished with the customer, the customer was probably thinking about, you know, poking their eyes out with a fork. Because they just, they, they were just not interested in, all the whizzy doos they just want some basic, you know what I mean? So, and I don't mean that as a, you know, I know you've got a lot of engineers there, so I don't mean that as a, uh, but, you know, engineers have to develop those softer professional skills, professional people, people with those good skills have to understand, but not become, uh, you know, a technical uh, wizard. Absolutely right, sir. Absolutely. Uh, so, Kamal, I think uh, any other question left? No, sir, I think uh, uh, we can go ahead with the conclusion. Uh, thank you so much, sir, uh, Dr. Steve. I would request uh, Kanika, ma'am, to... Uh, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Uh, Dr. Stephen, love listening to your lecture. I guess, uh, you know, I, I can say this for shorty that uh, everyone would be all yours. It was so powerful, so impactful. And yes, you know, you are very right, as you said in the beginning, that the times are changing and future of work, the world of work is changing and this calls for us to realize that, you know, are we really self, uh, do we, does the work, uh, you know, make us uh, feel excited and it's not just the objective measures of success, but the subjective measures, in fact, this is a, you know, a takeaway for me as well, a new insight that, you know, we have to be considering when we are talking about uh, success, you know, it is not just, it can't be objectified only. And uh, yes, you know, again, uh, many valuable and wonderful lessons, I would say that knowing the three case, three plus two case, I would say, knowing why, whom, how, when and where, you know, and then you talked about uh, the, uh, the requirements for a successful uh, global career, uh, how it is important and imperative to invest in psychological, human and social capital and the practical tips and advice that you gave, you know. Uh, simple advice, maybe, you know, like uh, when you are sending uh, and request somebody, somebody on LinkedIn to be connected to the person, it's imperative that you send a note and make the person realize uh, that why you want to connect with the person. So small little things, we are, I guess, uh, all the students who have joined us today are on social media, on different social media platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, everywhere. So how we can harness social media well and how from a career perspective, we have to be cautious uh, on you know uh, social media so that we don't leave any opportunity for anyone to point out fingers in fact I, so, uh, I read uh, I watched a video by Dr. Todd Hewitt he is the most watched uh, LinkedIn person his videos are the ones which are most uh, watched all over the world and he in fact you know uh, stated the same fact saying that if you can't show something to your boss to your father to your siblings or to your friends don't ever face, post it on social media so very yeah. valuable lessons. And the best part I would say, uh, you know, which I kind of could relate to and uh, I found uh, really interesting was uh, the design of work parts. Uh, how important it is for the ones who are occupying the strategic, you know, the decision makers, the managers, the leaders to design the work in such a way that it does not, it breaks the monotony and make, uh, make the people feel excited and driven is something which is so very important and that would really bring out the best uh, from them and 
in a in, in, in long terms it is going to impact the organization positively so thank you so very much love listening to you and would really be glad if uh, you visit us in the campus as and when uh, you come to india next time thank you so Abs much again. absolutely thank you very much i'm looking forward to it already absolutely so Sir, thank you so much, and we would love to have you in our campus in future. Definitely, uh, once the pandemic is over, and uh, love to see you. And definitely on uh, LinkedIn, we will connect with each other, and definitely we are going to nurture our uh, connect with you for the long run. Definitely, sir. Thank you Excellent. so much once again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye now. Bye bye, sir. Bye. Take care.